I think I'd do it because if somebody you didn't know was in your house and you had no idea who they were, would you want them in your house? I think that's why I'd do it. It's 6 a.m. on the White Cliffs of Dover. Jeremy Davis, a DJ from Wolverhampton, is looking for something. He's a member of one of a number of migrant patrol groups operating along the Kent coast. His group is called Little Boats. They monitor and highlight what they describe as an invasion of illegal migrants coming across the channel. And they tend to now pick them all up out at sea. I mean, it's a well-oiled machine that they've got going. Davis was a long-time Labour Party member but became disillusioned with the party's approach to immigration, among other things. Over 7,000 people have come to Britain on dinghies this year, small in terms of migration globally. Nonetheless, it offends Davis's sense of fairness, offends his sense of Britishness. There's a loss of the ability to speak, is what I think is happening in this country. There's, uh, it's not that we've lost control, it's that people who are worried about things can't say anything. And we're losing self-belief. For some reason, we're looking in the mirror and thinking, well, this country's dreadful. We spoke to Jeremy at the Cliffs on Friday. He brought us to meet other migrant spotters further along the coast at the marina in Dover, where migrants and refugees are brought in. Uh, we don't know who these people are. And that's yeah, the sure half, half the country doesn't know who their neighbours are, Jeremy. They don't, but, but yeah, of course. But they have a birth certificate. Because you could argue then that the solution is just to get to know them. Do you know, I t I'm open to that. That that is, well, why not? You know, if that were to make the difference to understand who they are, but it always comes back, they are deliberately hiding who they are. Over the weekend, up to 170 people were collected in 12 dinghies. A further 222 were stopped by French authorities. The body of one person was found on a beach in Calais. So it's a very busy morning here for Border Forced. The rib comes in and it moors just behind the jetty there. And then they take the migrants off. Uh, they go into this large logistical centre here. Um, and I think we have actually one of the uh, migrant spotter gentlemen here. Hey man, talk to us for a minute. Go on then, you. you all right? What are you up to? I'm just catching these. Is it OK? YouTube live. So we, you've got a YouTube live here? Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. I'm on, one for Twitter. Oh really? Wow. And why are, you, why are you doing this? Tell us. Because these people are illegally invading our country, yeah? And there's nothing we can do because of the European Court of Human Rights. So, what's your name, by the way? Sorry. It's Active Patriot. Active Patriot. Um, will I just call you Active? Or? Yeah, yeah, just call me Active. Um, Active Patriot is one of a host of YouTubers who live stream arrivals. They call themselves the migrant spotters. They confront people getting off boats and at times disrupt the work of Border Force officials and the police. Hey, one in, one out. Here we go. Active Patriot's channel has over 50,000 subscribers. Do you do this full time or? I have been doing it for the last six months. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Up and down every. I don't even live around here. I just come for a month at a time. Yeah. You say you've been doing this for weeks on end, and it's yeah, not yeah. your it's not your full time job. How do you survive day to day? Do you this, do you make I a don't, living from I don't, this? I don't make, no, 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 no. Oh, do you not? No, okay. No, I just do this because I love the country, and I want I want to keep my country. How it, how, it, how it should be English. Next up for Active Patriot and the so-called migrant spotters is the old Napier Army Barracks, Folkestone. It used to accommodate Gurkhas, now houses hundreds of people who have arrived in dinghies. On Saturday morning, a large number of demonstrators showed up to welcome the people inside. Syed Farsi from Iran is living in the barracks. Says he paid a smuggler to get him to Europe, but didn't know where he was going to end up. But you didn't know that you were coming to the UK? No. Most people, of course, do. Syed, though, was keen to show us that, contrary to what some people said, conditions inside the barracks are quite basic. He also wanted to show us that one of the blocks was put in quarantine this weekend after a number of cases of COVID-19 were reported. 
This is not only a concern for the people inside, there's considerable disquiet in the neighbourhoods around the barracks as well. After the pro-refugee demonstration, a small counter-demo. People ripped down the welcome signs and some shouted abuse at those inside. Another day, further along the coast, another patrol. Channel Rescue is a human rights monitoring group set up in part to counter the so-called migrant spotters activity. Have you ever come across the other patrol while you've been doing this? Uh, not personally, no. Yeah. Not personally, no, but I have come into contact with the far right before at you know, various different things to do with migrants and asylum seekers. Yeah. You see, their argument, or at least some of them say, that we're not the far right. We're actually, it's about fairness for some of them, that it doesn't seem fair that the people coming in the dignities are basically jumping, jumping the queue. That, 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 no, that's the argument. Are they? Are they jumping the queue? Or is that just far right rhetoric? I mean, you can't believe everything they say. This is a problem, you know, it's... No, but what they mean by that is that they're not coming in through legal official routes. OK, um, some people can't. You know what I mean? If you're in a war-torn country and your house has just been burnt down and it had your passport in it and now suddenly someone's just bombed the passport office, what can you do? You can't get travel documents. We support safe legal routes um, for people so they don't have to make the dangerous crosses. Back at Dover, the boats kept coming in. None of the activist groups we spoke to had direct contact with those arriving. That was left to the men and women who work for Border Force and the Home Office, amidst all the noise, doing their job with a firm hand, but with tenderness too.